Uh, well, hello, and welcome to uh, what I guess is the start of Unit 3. So I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you're enjoying this process that you are all uh, in the midst of as you're kind of bringing to an end uh, your uh, kind of the culminating project here in the Master of Arts in Leadership program. So it's been fun to look at websites uh, and uh, uh, get all your content in there. If you haven't, uh, for some reason, sent me that website uh, quite yet, go ahead and do that if you would uh, right away so I can have that. And again, one of the things to remind you of, it's not a completed website. I'm not looking to have everything done, but what I am looking to see is have you kind of put thought in to how you're going to have it laid out, um, you know, the format, all the different, you know, maybe pictures, website pages, and things like that that you want. So I've heard from a few of you that um, despite me saying that I thought WordPress was a, a user-friendly um, site option, <clears throat> um, you have found it otherwise, and that's perfectly okay. So um, yeah, I guess I should have even clarified that while I find it to be that, you may not. And so I'm glad that um, some of you have uh, discovered another option, whether it's Wix or Weebly, moved on that direction. So by no means do you have to go the WordPress route. I just know that I, as I've looked at them myself, what I've found to be um, perhaps, I guess, the most useful or beneficial for me has been that, but again, you may find something completely different. So if you um, are kind of in that same boat, you're thinking, hey, you know, it really wasn't that easy, um, and you're considering maybe wanting to go a different route, then by all means, go a different route. So um, again, this is your project, and so I want you to think about how uh, might you feel best kind of represented and how you uh, maybe uh, may best and most clearly communicate what it is that you want to say uh, on this site, and perhaps that's through uh, another uh, avenue as far as a, a, a website delivery mode. Okay, so if you have any questions on that, feel free to, to contact me, email or call. A um, couple things for you. So I was looking through uh, the Connected Leadership website where you all um, have completed your uh, Achieving Styles inventory. Okay, all of you individually have completed your Achieving Styles inventory, which is fantastic, so thank you for that. Um, however, um, a good number of you, uh, your, um, your evaluators or the references that you have given me their names and email addresses have not, okay? So this is where it comes to, um, it's kind of a tricky thing because I'm asking somebody on your behalf to complete something uh, in order for you to be able to complete your graduate degree requirements, okay? So some of them, I, I think some have none that have completed it. Some have one, and I think one has all of five, and then some others are kind of in between, one, three, five, something like that. So I'm not able to um, release the results until we have at least three respondents, okay? And, and really, you know, and this is for a number of reasons, but <clears throat> the first and most important reason is for anonymity. So uh, here's the deal. If we only have three, this is why we ask for five. If we only have three people respond, um, then you can, I'm all but positive, because I've done this myself, you can go through and you can say, okay, this was that person, and this one was that person, and this one was that person. So even though three is kind of this, this, this magic number for, for secret kind of anonymity, um, for our purposes, both in class and here online, uh, we are uh, not just requesting five, but we aren't going to release the results of these assessments until five people have responded, okay? So, and I'm doing that from a protection standpoint from the respondents, but I think also it's much more helpful for you or if I were doing it for me as an individual to receive uh, a response from multiple people. And yet so often uh, we, we, don't, um, we don't ask for, uh, nor do we receive input. And so here's what I'm asking for you to do. I'm asking for you to reach out to those five. You remember who they are because you were the one that gave me their names and email addresses. And do not ask them if they have completed uh, the, the assessment, okay? Please don't ask them because if they write back and they say they have, then there may be some ways you can look at results and kind of identify who it was that said what and so forth. And that's not what we want. What I am asking that you do is to reach out to them right away and uh, just let them know. Hey, my instructor came before the class and said that some of our people um, had not responded, or some of my people had not responded to the 360. I know you have a lot going on, um, but I can't fully complete the requirements of this program uh, if I don't get your response. And just kind of lay it out. You know, use your own language, but don't don't blame. 
just ask the question and then you know I put a note in there that says hey and if, if you have completed it uh, first of all thank you and secondly you can just completely uh, of course ignore this note I would also ask if there are folks that you asked originally just make a little note and say hey you know what um, if you really are unable to complete this for me um, then please let me know and uh, I will try and find somebody else. Now, I've already sent them to them, so I have to go back to Connected Leadership and do some additional work to try and have one person's name removed and see if we can get another person's name put in there. So that's some additional work, uh, but if that's what we need to do, we need to do that, okay? So um, what I would ask that you do then is uh, send that email today. So you get this video, send the email to your people today. Um, unless you hear from me, and if you hear from me, and um, it will be after you've probably seen this video, so I'll send you a note really quickly thereafter. Um, if you are good to go, you'll receive a note and say, don't worry about contacting your people. But if you are not good, you will um, just assume that, that you need to do this, okay? And I would ask that you uh, ask them to respond and complete the assessment, uh, let's see, no later then uh, this Friday, January 27th by 8 p.m., okay? And if they say I can't do that, uh, then I need to know right away. Okay? I need to know right away so we can get a new person in there uh, because once again, you won't be able to get your results uh, until you have five people respond. Now, hopefully, I've already asked you to make sure that you can secure and you've identified your results from your initial ASI and 501, okay? But those are not results that you give to me. Those are results that you will be using for your own purposes. And what you will be doing is you will take 501 and you'll compare it to 595. So this is yours, this is yours, this is the ASI, and then you have the aspirational, you remember that, where I want to be. And then you compare both where you were and where you are. And then I would also compare where you wanted to be and where you are. And then I would compare what your respondents, your evaluators are saying to where you are so that you get this really well-rounded picture and really this, this description and depiction of who you are and how you operate from a behavioral standpoint when it comes to leadership. So yes, you've learned a tremendous amount about leadership and you're reading great books, you know, a couple which we'll talk about here in a second. But ultimately, you know, we can fill our heads with all this knowledge. We can know all of these things about leadership, but, but, for what purpose? Again, you remember last week I talked about if you get to the end of this program and you can't say that I've had my life transformed so that I can go help other people, then we've missed something. Well, similarly, if you've read all these things and you've studied all these things and you've written these papers and you've kind of had these things kind of unearthed, un, un, unshackled, if you will, un, um, kind of unpacked, but it's not affecting the way that you actually are doing leadership, then for what, what, what reason have you learned all these things? What good is it? So we want to see, and I would say... I would hope and think that you would even more want to see that what you've learned has directly impacted how you act as a leader. And these five evaluators, their responses, should give you a great picture and snapshot of that, whether it's true or perhaps there's still some room for improvement, which of course there always is for all of us. Okay? So those 501 uh, ASI, uh, AASI results are not for me, they're for you. All right? So there's that. Uh, so talking about the, this, this current 360 in ASI, um, you've all done it individually, that's great. But once again, remember to contact your people, and then I will also reach out to them as well with another gentle reminder to please complete the assessment. And if you hear from them, if they're not going to be able to, please let me know right away. All right? So there's that. Um, a couple other things. Uh, this week, you um, are going to be uh, doing some reading. Uh, you uh, Last week, you should have uh, gotten into... Chapters one through three from Littman Blumen once again. So here in um, in the Connected Leadership text, you should have been spending some time in, in this book again. So you you have this from 501. So you're spending some time once again reading that text. Um, you also should have read uh, a, an article by Winston and Tucker. So um, and I never heard from any of you. So my assumption is that you have that article. So. Um, I have the article, and I'm trying to remember if it had been shared with you, but nobody contacted me saying otherwise, so I'm not sure uh, where you stand on that. So if you didn't get a chance to read that and you need a copy still, please let me know, and I can get that to you. Or rather, I would just encourage you to go to the apu.edu uh, slash library database and find the article in there, okay? And so that's really, that kind of frames this conversation of, um, you'll remember that Littman Blumen, she talks about this idea um, of kind of this disarming way of approaching um, uh, people and doing things that kind of catch them off guard. 
And so one of the things that we see this text, this article that we're reading uh, this last week that hopefully you've read so far, talks about uh, the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount really is, um, it's, a, it's a reference uh, in Scripture where Jesus is talking. He's saying things that are very much in contrast to what folks have heard or what they've seen or what they experienced or what they thought. So there, it's full of, you have heard it said, and yet I tell you. Um, and, and really, as we are people that are kind of operating in leadership, that's, I think, what we should be doing. We should be people that are, that are doing things that oftentimes may uh, even appear to be uh, a bit, and not for the sake of just being in opposition, but they're different. They're antithetical. They're, they're, they're a much different approach where they're disarming. And people go, wait, oh, oh, oh interesting that I see them doing that. And hopefully at the center of that is us putting people first before ourselves. So I love what scripture talks about where it says that we should be uh, working to outdo one another in honor. I think that's a great sign of a great leader uh, in, uh, you know, yes, we may be in charge, but are we working hard to outdo one another in honor by way of putting people first and, you know, thinking of them before we think of ourselves and so forth. So I want you to spend some time reading that article and really kind of thinking through that. Um, and then, of course, you um, last week should have been in Chapter 2 of uh, the Cameron text. So once again, this, uh, this book of positive leadership. And then this week, you'll be in uh, Chapter 3 of positive leadership. So we'll be looking at uh, positive relationships. So last, last week was positive climates. And then, of course, the week before kind of laid the foundation for the text of positive leadership. You'll also be reading an article um, by Hollenbeck, McCall, and Silzer about um, competency-based education. Okay, so here's here's the thing that I want to say about that. Um, I was in a meeting earlier, and um, Dr. Ed Barron, our department chair, was talking about uh, how as this class that you're currently in is, is, is running in parallel to the ongoing face-to-face -face course, one of the things that he has his class do is almost this, this debate. It actually, not almost, it is, it's a debate. And he splits the, the class up into two sides and they have to debate, um, is competency-based education, uh, is it valid? Is it valuable? Is it important? Does it accomplish what we think and hope and say it should or does or can or could, right? And then there's, I would say, no, it's not. So they're going back and forth. So while we won't be doing that in this class, I want you to be thinking in that. Okay, hey, so it's an article that's laying a bit of a foundational understanding for why we do competency-based education. Now, CBEs, which is you know truly competency-based education, is oftentimes where you get credit, either undergrad or graduate credit for your experience. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but in our purposes, we have these five core competencies and three meta competencies, and so we're looking at this, you know, this overarching. This is the the competency that we will complete or we will work toward, we will graduate with, more of, less of, you know, somewhere in between as we go through this program. So what I want you to think is, is this a valid approach to education from a competency-based standpoint? Okay, so we've got that. And then, of course, uh, this week, as you see here, you had this artifact brainstorming. This is where I want you to spend some time as you think about your learning and your experience in the program, what are some of the more or maybe even the most influential and important papers, presentations, um, out of class, in class ex experiences that you have had that have helped to shape your understanding of leadership, your approach to leadership, and the way that you do the things that you do because of what you learn in this program. Okay, so you're just brainstorming those things. Um, and then as you look ahead, uh, you will um, be submitting by the 4th of February an articulation of competency. So you have two of those drafts due, but please do make sure to, uh, at the end of our time together, have written an articulation of competency for all of the competencies, the four or five competencies. Okay? So that's a lot. I just kind of fire, fire hosed you in the last 15 minutes, um, but I hope you are staying ahead and not getting behind because I think that in a short time frame like this with eight weeks, having to pull everything together into one uh, uh, culminating experience can be a challenge. And so I want to make sure that you are staying on task, on target with time, and being able to complete things as assigned. So, of course, as always, if I can be of service or of help, please feel free to call or email. If you need clarification on anything, just know that I'm a phone call or an email away. Hope you're having a great week so far. Hear this on Monday, and I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you online.